In this lesson, we're going to talk about geocoding. Geocoding is the process of taking a street address and turning it into a latitude and longitude. And reverse geocoding is the process of taking that latitude or longitude and converting it back into a street address. Maps and location services typically work with latitude and longitudes, but humans work with addresses. So us being humans, we'd like to enter an address if we wanted directions to someplace as opposed to trying to figure out the latitude or longitude. But the mapping API is going to want a latitude and longitude. So we need to use a geocoder to get the latitude and longitude to pass into the mapping API in order to be able to process the directions. In this app, our user is going to be able to enter an address and click the geocode button. And we'll return the latitude and longitude. Then we'll click the reverse geocode button and we'll take that latitude and longitude and convert it back into an address. We're hopeful that this address is going to equal the address that we entered. We have a reference outlet for this text view and for the button, as well as a touch up inside delegate, and a reference outlet for our label for latitude and longitude, and also an outlet for the reverse geocode button, and we're handling its touch up inside event as well. And finally, we have a referencing outlet for the address label. We need to do a couple of imports, one for a core location services, and that provides us the geocoder, and then another for address book. And we'll see how that gets worked in later on. In addition to our storyboard objects, we have one property for our location coordinate, and that's going to provide essentially the latitude and longitude that we calculate initially, and then we pass along. When the user taps the geocode button, we create a CL geocoder object, and we geocode an address string, and we pass in the address that the user has entered in that address text box. And we have a local completion handler, and that has a parameter array of place marks and an error parameter. If we have an error, we're just going to log it, but hopefully we don't, and we have place marks. Now, when we're running through the geocoder, there might be some discrepancy about the address. For instance, if you've used Google Maps on the web and you enter an address, there may be a little confusion as to exactly what address you're interested in and it will present choices. This is the same idea, so you may return more than one place mark in the place marks array. So you might want to present user choices on that, but hopefully we have an array of one place mark and only one. So we'll take our first place mark and we'll get its location. And in our coordinate property, we'll take that location coordinate. And the coordinates really contain the latitude and longitude. And finally, we'll take our latitude longitude label and we'll set its text property equal to the latitude and longitude using the coroids object. So that's the first step. When we do the button reverse geocode, we're going to create a CL location object and we'll initialize that object with our latitude and longitude from our coroids object. So we're passing the latitude and longitude that we calculated when we press the geocode button. We'll create another CL geocoder object, and this time we'll do a reverse geocode location, passing in that CL location object. And we have a local completion handler, and it'll give us an array of place marks and an error object. Once again, we're hoping that we do get an array and that our count is greater than zero, and hopefully it's exactly one. In this case, because we're passing in a latitude and longitude, it's probably going to be one, assuming that the latitude and longitude are valid. So we'll take that first place mark out of the array and we'll grab its address dictionary. And this is indeed an NS dictionary object. So then we want to break that up and find the different parts of the address. So we'll look in the address dictionary for the street address and we'll put that into an address string. And we'll look for the city address, create our city string. Likewise for state and zip. Finally, we'll take all of those, format them up, and set our address label text. So that's how we're going to reverse it. So, when would we want to use this? Well, if the user was looking for directions to a new location, they're going to enter in an address. But our mapping API, in order to provide directions, is going to need to get the coordinates for latitude and longitude. So we would essentially run the button geocode touched code to get the latitude and longitude that we need to pass into the map to get directions. 
If the user was just trying to find out where they were in terms of street address, we could get their current location, which would indeed give us a latitude and longitude, and then we could do a reverse geocode location to show them the address of where they are. We might also be able to do a search for a store or a restaurant, and that provides a latitude and longitude as opposed to an address. So that's when you might want to use a reverse geocode. So let's take a look at these in operation. And we'll run that geocode. And you can see it returned a latitude of 43 and a longitude of minus 79. And here's the real test. We're going to reverse that. And sure enough, we were looking for 472 Morden Road. And we came up with 410 to 498, somewhere in between there, which 472 is. And we are in Oakville, Ontario. And the reverse geocode gives us the postal code, whereas we are able to just pass in the country. So again, human language versus machine language. So those are the basics of geocoding, and we'll be using that all the time when we're dealing with maps. So it'll just become second nature to use that geocode or reverse geocode, and you probably just have a little utility library class hanging around, and you'll put it in your apps without even thinking about it.